The use of batteries is entrenched in our modern daily lives, from phones, tablets, watches and laptops, to bigger things like electric cars and lawnmowers. But when it comes to repairing these devices, some companies advised against doing so because of the dangers of lithium batteries. Are batteries really that dangerous? Yes, they are. So what can be done to mitigate any risks, and should you be concerned about the safety of batteries? As you would already know, batteries store energy, which we use to power our devices. Each battery has two sides, an anode and a cathode, along with a barrier between them. That barrier stops the battery from shorting out. But things like heat, physical damage, or in rare cases, manufacturing defects, can cause a battery to fail and short out. If you have a discharged battery, there isn't likely to be much of a show, but damage a fully charged cell and expect some fireworks. Throw about 10,000 of these cells together and you'd have an EV battery. If an EV battery enters thermal runaway, it will release toxic fumes into the air, with the blaze being very hard to extinguish, requiring about 10 times the amount of water. Not only that, but it can reignite after being extinguished, because if there's still energy, there's still potential for a fire. Meaning damaged EVs have to be stored away from other vehicles and buildings. As the lithium battery explodes and the seven bikes go up in flames. And here I was thinking EVs weren't supposed to produce emissions. A similar thing has been seen with banks of batteries. There are several examples here in Australia of Tesla's power grid battery backups combusting. Fire and explosions is of course not exclusive to things powered by electricity. There's always a risk that petrol and gas vehicles can catch fire too. But what makes an EV fire so much more dangerous is that it's so much harder to get under control, with video evidence showing an EV on fire while submerged in salt water. This video isn't to scare you out of buying an EV or device with inbuilt battery, but to show you what can happen when things go wrong. But phones and tablets aren't like EVs and big battery banks. Instead of having 10,000 cells totaling a large capacity, your average phone or tablet only has a few cells, totaling usually between 3,000 and 7,000 milliamp hours of capacity, meaning if it were to combust, it would be smaller than that of an EV battery. But if there's a possibility of fire, wouldn't you think there'd be a law to force manufacturers to create devices with removable batteries? So if your battery is showing signs of failure or has been recalled, you can just remove the battery safely. Imagine the Galaxy Note 7 recall if Samsung hadn't transitioned to non-user removable batteries. People with affected phones could have safely removed and disposed of their batteries. I can understand for something with a low capacity battery, like a smartwatch, but to allow manufacturers to integrate a battery inside a laptop or phone is absurd. Batteries will go bad with time. Sometimes that just means reduced capacity, but other times it can expand, causing damage to a device. Removing an expanded battery sounds like the responsible thing to do, but you can't in most modern devices unless you have the know-how. That's because of the many physical barriers between you and your battery. Manufacturers for phones, tablets and laptops have transitioned to heavily gluing in batteries in what was likely an effort to stop you from easily repairing your device. But because of this, one might puncture the battery trying to get it out. Manufacturers have used this excuse for years as a reason why no one but the manufacturer should perform repair. But if the manufacturer was the one designing the product, they're the ones who designed it to be dangerous. After all, there was a time when phones and laptops had removable batteries. The one category of products that haven't fallen victim to the unreplaceable batteries is power tools. That also means if your tool is flat, you can quickly swap out batteries. When batteries are integrated, even recycling is more risky, as a charged battery could ignite when being transported, disassembled or shredded. This is the same reason why loose batteries are prohibited on most aeroplanes. So what can you do? Should you be concerned or avoid repairing devices with inbuilt batteries? Well, not quite, as you can avoid the dangers by simply discharging the battery before trying to remove it, usually below 15%. As the less charge the battery has, the less amount of energy it has to release if damaged. The best way to remove an adhered battery is with isopropyl alcohol. Just using a syringe to disperse it around the perimeter will help, as the alcohol will soak into the adhesive and soften it. Heat can also be used if you have access to a heat plate, but I would advise against using a direct heat source like a heat gun, 
as this could cause damage to the battery, creating a risk of thermal runaway. As for electric vehicles such as cars and scooters, the risk of thermal runaway is more likely from physical damage or catastrophic failure, and not so much repair complications. Thankfully though, all of this is relatively uncommon. But you should always take precautions around batteries, discharge them when performing repairs, and charge them away from flammable surfaces such as bed sheets. And on that note, this has been Hugh Jeffries' video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the playlist for tech that's not what it seems. If you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.